Welcome to Shiny New Clients, the marketing podcast that helps you attract shiny new clients to your business. We'll talk about social media, what makes people buy, how to go viral, and marketing psychology, all in 20 minutes or less. Whether you're a coach, a stylist, or a wedding planner, if you've got a service-based business to sell, this is the show you need to fill your calendar. I'm Jenna Warner, your new marketing coach, and this is Shiny New Clients. Hash out this new theory with me. I'm working on theory where I think that if you remembered how to have fun, you would be a millionaire or at least set up to earn more or set up to build your business faster. Yeah. Okay. That's the theory we're running with. Here's the thing. Today, we're talking about what you need to do to have more business wins, like wins, whatever a freaking win is to you. And when I started writing this list of like how I would truly direct someone and help you have more business wins, it wasn't tactics. It wasn't strategy. It wasn't marketing. It wasn't what do I price my service at? It wasn't how do I NLP my copy? <laughs> if that made no sense to you, just just roll with it. It happens before that. It's more about the like place your head is at before you even go to write that copy or before you go to create that offer that you're going to sell people. That's how you have business wins. And for me, it starts with fun. Fun is one of my core values. I know it might not be for you, but fun is so key in helping me sell more and helping me commit to even sitting down to like write my posts or craft my thing. And I try and make things fun for other people because I just kind of push that value on to people. <laughs> when I'm teaching you how to make content, we have to be having fun because we want the content to be entertainment. Even if we're selling something that isn't typically fun. Like I have this one client who I've had for a really long time. He's a gynecologist. Even though we're selling gynecology, we're still making it fun. We can talk about serious things and make it fun. Fun doesn't need to be goofy and silly and like my personality. It can also just be engaging and interactive and interesting and make people think and that can be fun. Anyway, I think that's kind of a common misconception about content is that it has to be serious or that it should sound like hyper professional. There's definitely a balance, but that's not what we're talking about today. The first rule of how to have more business wins is recognize so you can replicate. I have this friend who has been my accountability buddy for, oh my gosh, years now at this point. We met at an event for entrepreneurs and she asked if I wanted to like talk weekly as accountability buddies and then it just, our friendship bloomed from there and we talk every single week. And uh, one of the things we did to format our weekly calls is we always start with a win. So you have to look back at your week and think what went well this week. And usually they're business wins, but sometimes they're not. And in doing so, we anchor the good things that happened that week. If I've learned anything from those calls, it's that, holy cow, a lot happens in a week when you're self-employed and living a full life. When you really look back every single week at all the things that have happened, it's like, goodness gracious, we have ups, we have downs, we have train wrecks, we have blast off, we have so many things. And every single week, I also teach Magic Marketing Machine which is my group program that helps service-based business owners get clients from the content that you post. And I teach that every single week. And I also start every single session of that with everyone sharing a win in the chat. And I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes it's like pulling teeth. I think part of that is people wanting to be modest or humble and not share their wins. And part of it is if you're like up in your head, it can be hard to look back and Think of something good that happened that week because maybe your brain's stuck on something that happened that wasn't so good. But let me tell you, when you recognize the good things that have happened, your brain anchors them. And if you take it one step further and say, wait, what did I do to get that success? Say you got a new client and that's your win. I booked a new client this week. What did you do to book that new client? Well, you know, I went to a networking event and I met them. And then they followed me on Instagram and then we started talking in the DMs and then I wrote a sales post and then they booked with me. You now have a formula for booking a client. You now have evidence on that it happened once and how it happened and you can go and do that thing again. But if you just proceed on autopilot, 
you're not anchoring it. So you're not having that fun, energetic, you know, abundant moment of realizing that you just did a cool thing and booked a new client. And you're also not kind of breaking it down into a process so you can do it again. And that's going to probably leave you feeling like you're always guessing, you're always throwing spaghetti at the wall, and you don't know exactly how to make your business more successful, when really the answer is right in front of you. And yeah, sure, maybe you could replicate that process and it wouldn't result in a success every time, but hey, maybe it would. Maybe it would. Plus, it's fun. Can you please just honor yourself? Actually, I challenge you to take this next brief pause to think of something awesome that happened to you this week in the last seven days. Okay, brief pause, initiating. You did what? What a good win. Oh my goodness. That's a huge win. That's awesome. That was a huge, look at you. What a huge, good win. There you go. I'm cheering you on. It's like we're in the same room together. Next one, ask for what you want. Let me tell you a story. Back in the day, I was an actor. I was a bartender. One, two, skip a few. I'm going to skip to the middle of the story. Essentially, I got forced to be a social media manager and I wasn't into it, but then I started doing it and I actually loved it. So I kind of got like pushed into this direction. And then I got a little scholarship to go to a digital marketing program. And I thought, okay, I'm going to like figure out what this world is all about. And if I'm doing social media, I should have a broader understanding for the world of digital marketing. So let me go and I'll try that and I'll see how it goes. And then I did that. And I heard about being a publicist in this class. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I would be a good publicist. So I told maybe five people, I would say max five people I told I was thinking about becoming a publicist. And then This publicist from LA was coming to Toronto and she needed somebody to work with her. And so she started asking everybody she knew in Toronto if they knew anyone that might be able to work with her at TIFF, the Toronto International Film Festival. And two people of the five people I told I might want to be a publicist were the people that she asked. Like, what are the chances that she even knew those two people that I knew from completely different circles? And they both recommended me, Jenna. And so she's just hearing this name, Jenna, over and over again. So to her, I look awesome because who's this Jenna person everyone's recommending to me? So I was a shoe in I had one conversation with her and she was like, yeah, you're hired. And then I worked with her at TIFF and then I worked with her at Sundance and I got to like work with her at all these film festivals, all this travel, all this amazing experience. And then I was a publicist for a while while doing social media. Well, I sort of found my place in the industry and went off on my own and eventually went full full tilt social media. All of that happened because I told someone what I wanted. So I'm like such an advocate of just shouting from the rooftops what you want. If you tell people what you want, more people are out there with their eyes open for you, figuring out paths for you to get there. And I think that so much of getting what you want is deciding what you want. And I do recognize that that can be tricky in and of itself. Sometimes I get into waves where I have no idea what I want and Yeah, I mean, makes sense, but that's the hardest time to get it. Next thing, do big, stupid experiments and be okay with them flopping. Big, stupid experiments. That's what I'm calling them. Uh, I did a big experiment. It's not actually stupid. Let's call them big, bold, big, bold experiments. Whatever. Big, stupid experiments sounds way more fun. So obviously that's what I'm leaning towards. Earlier this year, I hosted a workshop and... The workshop was called Carousels Class, and it was all about creating powerful carousels for Instagram and storytelling carousels, which is a really valuable tool to help sell. They're very convincing. You can make them quickly and post them quickly, and they have engagement built in. Storytelling carousels are very valuable for Instagram. Now, my goal was to host this class and then try and upsell people into Magic Marketing Machine, my group program. And I've done these things before where I like host either a paid or a free workshop and then you sell people on working with you further once they get there. Now, this was a big stupid experiment because I thought, hey, this might work. Let's try it. Put it all together. I had, I think, 48 people register to come to this class. The class was a huge success in and of itself, but the, you know who came to the class? People who are already in the program. Because I realized, oopsie daisy, the people who understand the value in carousels were the people who were already working with me. My cold audience didn't know carousels were important. 
So in the spirit of doing big, stupid experiments and also learning from my flops, that actually kind of made me laugh. I still showed all the people who showed up for that a really good time, gave away a ton of value, and and everyone came out with some amazing carousels. Oh, my goodness. But, you know, that became a learning moment and a moment where I was like, hey, I literally teach people not to sell something people don't want. And I didn't follow my own advice. I got too stuck in my solution-aware audience. I'm going deep now. I got stuck in my solution-aware audience. I got stuck in the mindset of the people who have already worked with me, not the people who have yet to work with me. What a great learning lesson. And then, you know, there's still probably going to be indirect ROI from that. Like people might leave that workshop and tell their friends where they were and who I am and all of that. So it still works well. But imagine I'd been so attached to the results and wasn't into doing big, stupid experiments and never learned from my flops. I would have showed up to that class with a bad attitude, knowing that it wasn't like performing as it was supposed to, and it wasn't going to generate new people joining the program. And then I would have had a bad attitude. And then it would have been a waste of everybody's time instead of an amazing afternoon, you know? In terms of asking for things that you want, one of my best tips for getting on podcasts, like I've guessed on, I don't know, 15 other people's podcasts. And one of my best tips for doing that is to literally go up into your Instagram stories and tell people that you're available to guest on their shows. Just say, just by the way, if you have a podcast, I am totally available to come on and would love to help your people with X, Y, and Z, like three things that you can talk ad nauseum about or what your expertise is. Or if you're looking for people to be on your show, then I'm available for that. Just slide into my DMs and talk to me because I've done that and literally just gotten onto people's shows because they reach out and say, sure, come on to my show. And one time in a Magic Marketing Machine group call, I challenged everyone to do that this week. I'm like, we might have even paused the call so everyone, sometimes they do that. Like you have to make the story right there in the moment. Well, you don't have to, but I encourage you to. And I'm like, just put it up right now. No harm, no foul. Ask for what you want. Put it out there. Do a big stupid experiment. Be okay with it flopping. Learn from the flops. Like these are all the rules to success, you know? And what it boils down to in an action step is just ripping off the Band-Aid and making an Instagram story telling people that you'd love to guest on their show. And who knows the amazing results that could come from that? Okay, one more tip before I let you get back to your work or your snack or your kids or your procrastinating or your exercising or whatever you're doing today. It's pretty simple. It's just get excited about stuff. Get excited about stuff. Your content's going to be so much better if you're excited about stuff. If you start thinking about the potential that these actions you take today could result in, get excited about that. It's so infectious. Even if you're forcing yourself to do it at first, use it as a strategy, man, because you getting excited about stuff is energetic. It's infectious. It's attractive. It's going to make all of your marketing better. And it means you're going to like your life more. To reiterate, recognize your wins so you can replicate them. Ask for what you want. Go too big. Be okay with flopping. Learn from the flops. Do big, stupid experiments and get excited about stuff. It wasn't fancy, but it is true. Wait, I lied. One more thing. I forgot. It's late September 2023 right now. On October 6th, I'm teaching a free session that is all about how to look more like an expert on Instagram. And I'm actually going to be giving away two Instagram audits to people who attend live right there on the call. I'm going to do their audits live. Everyone who comes gets their name in a draw to win a ring light. I'm going to give you tips for getting more engagement on your posts. I'm going to give you tips for looking like an expert and having more authority in your content so people trust you faster so you can make more sales. It's going to be really fun. It's free. And then I'm going to give you a sneaky little promo. So if you decide to join Magic Marketing Machine, I'm going to really make it worth your while. That's October 6th. And the link to register is in the show notes. And if you're listening to this and it's 2026... Look at us go. We've come so far. Okay, that's all from me. Love you. Bye.